use case diagram is going to be a great way for you to start thinking about system and features. So once you've done all of your flows and you understand the uses all that stuff, now you can get into the system and how the system is going to help them. So your use case diagram is going to be great for you to just you know map out the big things that the, the system is going to do to help your users. And um, I don't want to go into all the details of it, but basically a use case diagram consists of your actors, a use case which is represented by the circle, and the systems are here. And there's a few annotations that make sense, um, such as you have includes and um, extend. And basically the difference between them is um, um, that the base use case can be extended to a other use case to say you may or may not execute this use case when you do this. So for example, if you're a bank ATM transaction, you may or may not need the help. You could if you wanted to, but it's not always the case. But when you include something, is that in order for you to execute this bank transaction, you have to execute the customer authentication. So that's why it's include. And then you have generalization, where this base use case is a generalization of this one. So those are the main three um, annotations that you use on use case diagrams. And they're very helpful to kind of show you the big features that this system is going to do. So I have an example here um, of a project I'm working with my mentees. And all of these use cases in blue are just all of the big functionality that's going to happen in this system. And these are all the actors or the people that are going to interact with the system. And so what this does is give you this great just overall view of all the things that the system is going to do without having to get into all the details, all the details of each of these things. So as you can see here, it says get recommendation, update an order. This is for a restaurant, a food delivery system, right? So what you could do now, once you have all of these big ideas, then you could go create flow diagrams or specific uh, requirements or so on of each of these. I, I suggest that we do this after you do the flow diagram because you could do them at once. I mean, you could do them side by side, but I like to do my flows, understand my flows in my head first. Then when I get to here, I map out the big features. And then from here, I can create my requirements document or I can create my uh, user stories. So these are great if you're doing agile. So these could all be epics. And then all the details of how they actually get, get done could be all of your user stories underneath those epics. If you do requirements, then you could have a requirement document that will cover a lot of these. You could even split it up to be each one of these its own requirement document. Who knows? But basically, this is a great way to get an overview of what the system is going to do from a big high-level picture point of view.